Okay, let's talk about datums. By now you might have some clues of what datums are. So now I'm just going to get you a bit familiar with the concept to get you going. Datums are theoretical exact references. They can be planes, axes, or points. Now when I say theoretical exact reference, what I mean is that they are perfect unlike the surfaces on your part which have all sorts of imperfections. You use datums to reference other features to them. They act as your base features that you do your measurements from. Manufacturing can also benefit from knowing your datums because it tells them which features and what parameters are more important for having a functional part. Let's say you have a flat surface on your part which is defined as your datum. Now, this flat surface is not perfect because this is the real world. Nothing is perfect no matter how accurate your manufacturing is. There is always an error even if small. This imperfect surface that is on your part is your datum feature. Now the datum itself is a perfectly flat theoretical plane that touches your datum feature. No matter how imperfect your datum feature is, there will at least be three points of contact between your datum feature and your datum. Now how do we use this datum? If datums are theoretical, how do we do the measurement? Well, what we need is a datum feature simulator. Datum Feature Simulator is either a manufacturing or an inspection equipment that contacts your datum feature. It can simulate a plane, an axis, or a point. It is supposed to derive your actual datum. The principle is that your datum feature simulator has to be manufactured with much less error compared to your part to be able to do its job correctly. Now there are seven different types of datums which you will learn about in the datums chapter. We have planar, width, spherical, cylindrical, conical, linear extruded shape, and complex datums. You use datums to restrict your parts in some or all of its degrees of freedom when measuring your part. The most common method is using three perpendicular surfaces as your datums. These three datums establish what we call a datum reference frame. When you have a part with perpendicular faces, you can benefit from this method easily. Your first plane will restrict 3 degrees of freedom by having contact with at least 3 points on your imperfect surface. If you're using the z-plane as your datum, you're limiting motion in z-axis and also rotation around x and y-axis. If the second plane is the x-plane, it limits 2 more degrees of freedom by having a minimum of 2 points of contact with your surface. This limits motion in the x-axis and rotation around the z-axis. Now the third plane being your Y-plane, limits the last degree of freedom by having at least one point of contact with your surface. This way, motion in the Y-axis is also limited. This is also known as the 3 2, 1 rule in GDNT. Now, let's see how you can specify your datums on a drawing. There are different ways you can do this, which you will learn about them later. For now, I'll cover a few of them to get you going. Looking at this drawing, you can see some of the ways you can specify datums on regular features. What they have all in common is that the datum letter has to be in a box and should be connected to a triangle. You can even put the datum letter under your feature control frame that is pointing to your datum feature to define it, which is very common. Now, you can also specify features of size as your datum features. Although your datum feature is the surface of your feature of size, the datum itself is their reference. So for a cylindrical feature, datum will be its center axis. For a sphere, it will be its center point, and for two parallel surfaces, it will be their midplane. You can define an axis as your datum when you point to the walls of a cylindrical feature of size. You can also have your datum letter under your feature control frame that is pointing to a feature of size. Now to define a midplane datum, you need to have your datum letter in line with the dimension that specifies the distance between your two planes. This is really important, because if the letter is not in line with the dimension, you're specifying the one surface that you are offset from as your datum, and not the midplane between the two. Now that you're a bit familiar with what datums are and how you can specify them on your drawing, let's go back to our same example and understand what we're doing when we use datums in our feature control frame. First thing you notice is that we have three datums defined here. We have A, B, and C. They are all planar and are pointing to regular features. Also notice that they are all perpendicular to each other. This is very common in GDNT which we covered earlier. These three datums establish your datum reference frame. 
you can see that your three datums are using our GDNT feature control frames when defining position tolerance for our two cylindrical features of size. We already know that we are controlling the position of our two features by defining a circular tolerance zone that their center axes have to lie within. Also, let me remind you that the first datum in the feature control frame is your primary datum. The second one is your secondary, and the third one is your tertiary datum. They don't have to be alphabetically sorted. You should use them in whatever order that makes sense. Now, always remember when you're reading your feature control frame, your primary datum has higher precedence than your secondary and tertiary datums. The secondary datum also has a higher precedence than your tertiary datum. A good rule of thumb is to specify them in the order that makes sense in your assembly. Now, let's see what A, B, and C are doing here. Well, first of all, notice that datum A is perpendicular to your two axes. When you use the position symbol in GDNT, if your datum is perpendicular to your axis, it simply means that your tolerance zone is perpendicular to that datum. Easy, right? Now, B and C are different. They are parallel to your axes. This means that you need to specify the distance from your axes to your two datums and put them in a box. These are basic dimensions and their tolerance is 0.141 millimeter defined in your feature control frame. This entire feature control frame is only specifying the position, size, and orientation of your tolerance zone on your part. And as long as your axis fits in this zone, your feature's position is in spec. Now let's see how one can inspect this part. First, you need to restrict datum A, which is the main mating surface in our assembly. You will have minimum of three points of contact. This will limit three degrees of freedom. Then you restrict datum B by using a datum feature simulator perpendicular to datum A. This gives you a minimum of two points of contact and will limit two more degrees of freedom. Then you can limit the last datum C, which gives you a minimum of one point of contact, limiting your last degree of freedom. Remember that the order that you use your datums does make a difference and you should always pick the more important surfaces first based on assembly or functioning of your part. Let me also remind you that this drawing is not complete, but I don't want to confuse you at this time. Engineers usually put some kind of control on each datum to control their form and orientation with respect to each other, but let's not get carried away right now. Okay, we did it. For those of you serious learners, I have a full course on GDNT that I teach everything in a very digestible manner with many examples, tests, and bonus material that gets added frequently. I also have a free one hour webinar on our website that I go over GDNT symbols in more depth, so I suggest you to check that video out as well. Please like this video if you have learned a thing or two from this video and subscribe so you don't miss out on new YouTube content. I hope you have a great rest of the day.